Hi, it's Carrie. In today's 5 Minute Friday, I want to show you some of the neat things that you can do with a citation database called Scopus. Scopus is from a large publisher named Elsevier. It is available through the Cook Library of Towson University. If you aren't affiliated with Towson University, you'll need to check with your institution's library or librarian. This is the landing page for Scopus where you can search in ways that you are probably familiar with, putting some keywords here and putting some keywords in here. Scopus doesn't use controlled vocabularies like MeSH or mTree. However, it does capture those terms. So let me show you how to search with controlled vocabulary terms that you might find in MeSH or mTree. We'll go into advanced document search. And over here on the right, you're going to see operators and field codes. If you hover over them, it will tell you what fields are being searched. And if you click on the plus sign, you can add it to your search. What I want to show you today are keywords and index terms. So any controlled vocabulary terms assigned to the document. And I've pulled up a help guide from Elsevier that explains where these index terms are coming from. So let's take a walk through this part. The index terms are displayed for 80% of the titles covered in Scopus and derived from thesauri that Elsevier owns or licenses, or in the case of MeSH, are freely available on the web. They are added to records to improve search recall and a team of professional indexers manages the assignments of the index terms to records according to these controlled vocabularies. So if you're a medical librarian or somebody who searches in medical disciplines, mTree from Embase and MeSH are probably the ones that you're the most familiar with. However, they also capture engineering terms, GeoBase, FLX, WTA, which looks like it relates to fluid and textile sciences regional index, and species index. And so let's go over to the MeSH database. MeSH is used to index articles for Medline. And here we can look for terms. So let's look for sensory processing. It maps to perception, perception. And there are lots of narrower terms under perception. Uh, let's go with listening effort. That seems a bit more unique. So this is a fairly new term introduced in 2022, listening effort. So we're going to go over to Scopus. We're going to search for articles that have an index term of listening effort. Now these could be coming from Embase or other, or other sources that have listening effort as an index term, but we don't know for sure. So we're going to click on the plus sign. We're going to add listening effort, and I'm going to put it in quotes, just because it's a phrase and I want to keep it together. This is the index term, matches this, and then we're going to click search. 166 documents. So this is a fairly new term, so we're not going to see very much literature prior to 2022 unless it had a different subject heading before that. Maybe let's see. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it, it did carry over from another medical subject heading. If we look at that, the previous indexing was auditory perception. Still, it's not a huge topic. So because we searched here, uh, let's go back to newest. We're going to click on the first record that comes up and we get to see a little bit about the article and the abstract. But here, under the article abstract, are the indexed keywords. And so here we see that indeed listening effort was an index term and it came from MeSH, Medical Subject Headings. It's also a term in mTree, so we'll keep that in mind. Let's look at number three. We'll scroll down, we'll look at the index terms. So, okay, so in this case, it's not coming from the mesh term, 
It must be an M tree term. Yes, it's an M tree term. Listening effort. So what are the reasons you might search with index terms? Well, in PubMed, if you were to search with listening effort, we get 51 results. And all we really get to represent these results here is a graph of the timeline results by year. But in Scopus, you can look at these results and consider that they're coming from at least Medline and Embase, potentially some other sources as well. And you might sort by, cited by, highest. So in this field of literature, literature that's been indexed with listening effort, what's been cited the most? And it turns out this article, Listening Effort and Accented Speech from Frontiers in Human Neuroscience from 2014 has been cited 103 times. Number two, from the actual from the Journal of Speech, Language, and Hearing Research 2013 has been cited 74 times. And these are all interactive, so you can click on that number and go to that list of 74. The other really cool thing you can do with Scopus, aside from seeing authors and subject areas, document types, source titles, keywords, affiliations, funding sponsors, country, source type, language, and the number of open access articles. You can also go to the top right of any set of search results and click Analyze Results. And you'll get this dashboard. And I've gone over this before, so I won't go over it in great detail. But here we might be able to discover something about a field or a journal in which we might care to publish, or an author we might care to reach out to by clicking on any of these dashboard options and seeing the top five, top ten journals where this research has been published, our prolific authors here, affiliations, subject area type, and territory, funding sponsor, all visualized. So what did we do? We found a medical subject heading in Medline in the MeSH database and we picked listening effort. Then we searched from Scopus advanced search with index terms, listening effort, got the results. You can sort by cited by highest and you can analyze the results a little bit more than you would be able to in either PubMed or MBAs. So I hope this was a fun little tool for you today. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.